We grew up in poor, broken homes in New Jersey neighborhoods filled with crime, drugs, and death. There were no doctors or lawyers walking our streets. Where we live, hustlers reigned, and it was easy to follow their example. We knew firsthand that the wrong friends could lead you to trouble. But even more, they can tear down hopes, dreams, and possibilities. We knew, too, that the right friends inspire you, pull you through, and rise with you. We knew we'd never survive if we went after it alone. And so we made a pact. We help one another through, no matter what. That's good, y'all. Good. Hey, shit, boy. It's chill. It's like cold. I was going to clean the crib, acting like they ain't coming over. That's how you got out the house. So I wasn't doing it. Thanksgiving ain't that much of a big deal. What? That's some good home cooked food. I'm trying to eat good come Thanksgiving. You want one? Nah, I'm good. You sure? I'm chilling, man. I told you it was going to take one. This little bitch. I knew it, boy. <laughs> it's alright. This type of drink is for cool people anyways. First off, your mother, bitch. Pass the damn drink, please. I'm glad we get a break for Thanksgiving though. <laughs> this Wilfred, oh my gosh, she gets me so tired. She keeps giving me 65s. Oh, that's crazy. It's hard that she like because she never give me anything under. Oh, is that Mr. Kingston? <laughs> Mr. Kingston, more like Mr. Crackhead. That guy's always around me, always looking for me. I told him not to come back. Well, at least not around here. I hang out with Strictly a Cool Spot, not a place for selling or using drugs. We gave it to him, but we told him to go do his business elsewhere. We approached him after we saw he started smoking. They, we taught him a lesson. As liquor mixed with adrenaline and flowed through our bloodstreams, our judgment quickly warped. I punched and kicked too, thinking to myself, he was probably somebody's father. In the back of an elementary school smoking crack, when he should have been at home. For 20 minutes, we punched and kicked him until he was red, black, and blue all over. For a couple of seconds, I enjoyed the look of surprise and admiration in their eyes. The, that nigga is crazy look that can play on the ego of a confused teenage boy and make him more dangerous than he ever knew possible. I had felt the rush of fear, but I had pulled out a knife. If I did nothing, I would have looked like a punk. As a kid, I aligned myself with guys who thought like me. Guys who did their work in school and avoided negative stuff. I realized avoiding the older, more intimidating boys, even becoming a big brother to my friends, was an excellent strategy. In high school, I followed the same pattern, but chose friends who did well in school, but still liked to have fun. That's what drew me to Ramek and Sam. We have the same core desire to make something of our lives. We brought out the best in one another. We weren't exactly alike, but that was okay. They never tried to pressure me to indulge. In fact, they never even drank in front of me. So we were cool. Even though Ramek and Sam would eventually follow neighborhood friends into trouble, I admire them for also having the good sense to recognize that those friends were no good for them and for having guts to break away. That's where having positive friendships can really help. If you find the right guys to hang with, guys you trust, who share your values and value your friendship, you'll find that you can stand up to almost anything. You may even be surprised how much you can accomplish together. I certainly was. Many of my friends and family call me by my middle name, Marshall. And when my friends and I have nothing to do, we find something. This was one of the many times when we were just walking the streets for fun. 
there wasn't much else to do. There were many nights where we saw a terrified teenager running through the adjacent park, trying to catch the number 24 bus and escape the grip of a Dayton street boy. That's how Newark was. You stayed on your side of town and all was fine. I didn't have the heart to shoot him, but he didn't care. I was 16, and my life was careening off course with no direction. It had happened so quickly. I always thought I was too cool to let a girl break my heart. Kay and I started hanging out regularly. We would go out to dinner, the movies, and even bowling. Things got serious pretty quickly between Kay and me, and we often talked about getting married and having kids someday. I wanted to have the perfect family I always hoped for as a kid. I didn't ever want to inflict the insecurity of a broken home like the childhood I had on a child. I tried to be careful. I tried. So what's going on, man? Probably just study. You're not going to answer that? No, it's okay. Person, keep calling, and you're not going to answer it. Damn. It's okay. See what I mean? Hello? Yeah? No? But I'm going to have to call you back. All right, bye. Who is that? Just an old high school friend. What she wanted? Well, he just wanted to know what... He? What the hell are you calling you 12 times for? Why are you keeping count? That's not your business. You are my business. You're my girlfriend, which makes it my business. Just because my boyfriend do not mean you have to be off of my business. You still ain't answer the question. Why is he calling you? Stop drilling me. It's not that serious. You got something to tell me? You, I don't let me have hear it. anything to tell you. You're lying. I'm not lying. Now, what was it you had to tell me? You know what? I'm leaving. No, where are you going? Later that night over the phone, she told me the truth. She had another boyfriend. I was crushed. How could I ever trust her? How could she do this to me? How could she do this to us? I broke up with her. After constant breakups and getting back together, my girl had moved on without me. I called her to tell her I loved her and I needed her in my life. Then she told me what I had been dreading to hear. She was falling for the other guy. She wanted to try to make it work with him and nothing I said could change her mind. I never even got to tell her about my plan nor Sam or George for that matter. With my heart in pieces, I began preparing again for medical school. The pack filled us with motivation and purpose, giving us a reason to keep pushing when it would have been easier to just give up. To be able to keep our promise to one another, we first had to want the same thing. The few times when our promise threatened to break apart, was when one of us began to want something different from what the other two wanted. We also had to trust one another completely. We had to believe that we had one another's back or crazy suspicions of one another's motives might have driven us apart. My motto was simple. No one can tell me I can't succeed. I've come to believe that every goal in life is obtainable and that the only limitations are the ones you set for yourself. When you fail repeatedly and you think you're done, the last try, the one that requires every ounce of will and strength you have is often the one to pull you through. It has pulled us, Dr. Samson Davis, Dr. Ramek Hunt, and Dr. George Jenkins through. Through the drugs, alcohol, gangs, weapons, and every other distraction, but staying strong and keeping true to the past.